Welcome to All College Day 2023. We will begin our program in the gymnasium in 13 minutes. All College Day 2023 will begin in nine minutes. Please join us in the gymnasium.
Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Please rise for the playing of the national anthem. We do have a quick public announcement. If you are on the balcony, we ask if you can find a seat down below. And if not, just please watch the camera. Uh, it's been jostled a bit and it's messing with the program, so please just watch out for that. We would like to acknowledge that today's event is taking place on the ancestral lands of the Tohono O'odham Nation and the Pasquayaki tribe, whose people have been living and working on this land since time immemorial. Well, hello, good morning. That goes out to everybody, to the full stands here at the gym at West Campus and to everybody who is watching online. I'm Greg Wilson, Dean of Applied Technology. And it is great to see so many of you here in the gym for all college day. Since last year's event, we have all been busy transforming Pima Community College into a premier institution. And this year, we're gonna keep building on our strong foundation. We're preparing for an HLC visit, and there is a lot of work to be done and improvements to be made. And you'll hear a lot more about that from our chancellor and our provost. You know, in fact, let's take a moment and realize how important assessments are. You know, I could ask you to write an essay on what you did this summer, I think that would take too long to grade and we'd have to stay on schedule. So instead, uh, we are gonna do a pop quiz. Three easy questions about this summer. Please applaud, yell, or scream for question one. Who watched Barbie this summer? Oppenheimer? You know what I'm gonna say next, Barbenheimer? All right, question number two. We're in a gym, so you can actually boo for this one. It sounds negative, but it's not. Please boo if you are not happy with the disintegration of the Pac-12, the Conference of Champions. <laughs> Just remember there is a silver lining. While we might lose Arizona and UCLA, we get Arizona, Kansas, so. <laughs> Question three. Please cheer if you went somewhere fun, traveled, and did something cool this summer. 
See, you passed. There you go. The year is off to a good start. We've already completed our first assessment. So to keep the, we'll keep the momentum going, and we will continue the year developing and supporting our students, and we will end the year celebrating their success. Just like we did when we ended the spring semester certifying more than 3,600 degrees and certificates. Let's take a look at the highlights from last commencement ceremony and reflect on why we're all here. All the students are lining up, getting ready for the procession. to present the class of 2023. Congratulations, graduates. With our endeavors, class of 2023, let's make this future ours. Awesome, and it's a poignant reminder of why we are all here. All right, so moving along, uh, you will see on the screens is a QR code for our attendance tracker. Thank you, Dr. Nick Richmond, for putting this together. Everybody, please take a few moments to check in. And the good news is you will be entered into a drawing for a gift card uh, sponsored by Pima's Foundation. Thank you, Marcy. And while you're checking in, let's enjoy some more smooth sounds from the Pima Jazz Ensemble. Let's hear it for the Pima Jazz Ensemble. At this time, I would like to welcome and recognize Pima's governing board members. From District 1, Dr. Wade McLean. From District 3, Maria Garcia. From District 4, Greg Taylor. From District 5, Luis Gonzalez. And please welcome to the stage the chair of our governing board representing District 2, Teresa Riel. Wow, 
That's a bright light. Good morning. So nice to see you all. Um, really short and quick, on behalf of the governing board, I'd like to welcome all of you to a new semester. Um, we definitely admire and are proud of all of the amazing things that our faculty, our staff, our administrators do each and every day to make these educational opportunities for our students available, so thank you so much. Um, the board is definitely interested in knowing all of the great things that are happening this year, so send us text messages, remind us of the good things that are going on in your classrooms and in, in your programs, and know that this year, besides having a lot of fun and doing all this great work with students, we also have to make sure that our um, reaffirmation of accreditation is successful. So in advance, all of you who are working on the HLC um, reaffirmation, we are so proud and so thankful for all of the extra work that you're doing because that's our number one priority, besides, of course, offering a great education for students. So enjoy the day, and it's so nice to see all of you. It feels like a homecoming for me, so I'm so glad you're here, and thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Chair Riel. At this time, I would like to introduce our interim chancellor, Dr. Dolores Duran Cerda. <laughs> Dr. Duran Cerda was recently appointed by the governing board as interim chancellor at Pima Community College. For six years, she has been serving as provost and executive vice chancellor for academic affairs where she has been leading and overseeing all academic areas for the college while focusing on student success, community engagement, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. She is a seasoned educator with over 20 years of comprehensive and increasingly responsible college-level instructional, administrative, and leadership experience. She becomes interim chancellor as we prepare for our HLC visit. HLC accreditation. Accreditation is our commitment to a high quality education, which means we are delivering the best education possible to our students. Ready, set, go. It's about making Pima better as a beacon and symbol for education. So our students are prepared for what's next as a cybersecurity specialist, a healthcare professional, or an aviation technician. Then find a job that's in high demand. A job that's the backbone of our wonderful community. It's an opportunity to transfer to a university and earn a bachelor's degree. It's about evaluating and improving services for our students. So they can thrive and finish. Our mission is to empower every learner, every day, for every goal. It's about diversity, equity, and inclusion, so all our students feel welcome. And supported. We care about their success. We value their choices and commitments. By demonstrating our commitment to them. We are following best practices. We are meeting that threshold to make sure that our students are successful. We need to provide them with state-of-the-art facilities and equipment. We need to elevate our students. And it takes all of us. Hey, Accreditation is about having systems in place for consistency and quality. Every few years, we reaffirm our accreditation. Our accreditor is the Higher Learning Commission. They're educators like us. And they want our learners to succeed. So that credits will transfer. So that we can distribute financial aid. So what's next? We are preparing a report for the HLC. We are confident that our accreditation will be reaffirmed. I'm committed to our success. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed. Me too. Count me in. 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 We're committed. Let's do this! Let's 
Isn't that a great video? <laughs> thank you to all who participated in that. And thank you, Greg, for being an awesome MC. Isn't he wonderful? Yes. Greg rocks. And thank you, Board Chair Rial, for your, your message and leading us uh, to the next year, academic year. So good morning. Buenos dias. How are we doing? Yay, it's so good to see all of you here. And I'm sure you're happy to reconnect with folks you haven't seen in a while all summer and, and, and maybe uh, through Zoom and now in person. So it's, it's just so, so wonderful to see your friendly, happy faces. It really inspires me and makes me very happy. And um, not only thank you for being here today, but tomorrow we've got a Super Saturday. I think it's the fourth one, the last one before classes start. And I know a lot of... Um, Staff, advisors, faculty um, are part of that process. I think over 50, I was there last weekend, and so thank you for taking the time on Saturdays to help our students. That's going to help us a lot. Well, it seems like you're doing well this morning. We've got a packed morning and also in the afternoon, and I hope in the summer you are rested, you got some rest, uh, reconnected with family and friends, and that you're refreshed and ready to start the fall semester. And truly, it's an honor for me to be standing here before you, serving as your interim chancellor. It's, it's a very humbling uh, experience, too. But I'm excited, and with your support, we're going to have an excellent academic year. Thank you. So I started at Pima since 1997 as an adjunct faculty. So overall, I've been in the classroom for about 27 years. And uh, I started working at Pima's and adjunct faculty, as I mentioned, then became full-time faculty in 2002, became president of faculty senate, and then served in various administrative positions. So I've been an administrator for 11 years and six years as provost. And in a few minutes, I'll be introducing our new acting provost. But I just do I want to share with all of you that I care deeply about community college learners. And in this, in this role, I'm hoping to collaborate with all of you, with the students, with faculty, with staff, our governing board, our partners in K through 12, the universities and business and industry, and of course, our beloved community of Tucson, to further seek innovation and transform lives for economic mobility for everyone in our community. So as you can see, our theme is building on a strong foundation. So we've had many, many years as Pima Community College a foundation, and with our former chancellor, he had a vision, and he implemented it and even made our foundation stronger. So I want to continue with the legacy that he's left and build on that, and so that is what is going to be my priority. We can go to the next slide, please. But before I do that, I'd like to share a little bit about myself and my roots. So this picture, is of my mom and of my uncle working in, as they used to say, Los Files, the fields. They were migrant workers. I think my mom was maybe 14, and my uncle there was about 13 years old. As you can see, they came from humble beginnings. Many of you know my, my family story, but it really is important to me, and I want to share it with you because we have many students who may have similar backgrounds. So my mom's side of the family is from Douglas, Arizona. Anybody from Douglas? Woohoo! Or Agua Prieta, Sonora, Mexico. So she, yay! So she was born in Douglas, raised in Agua Prieta, and then they moved permanently to Douglas when she was about that age that you see her there. And on my dad's side, he also came from very humble beginnings. He was from Chile, from South America. Um, but my, anybody from South America? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but my mom, you know, she wasn't thinking about going to college, but the librarians in her high school, in Douglas High School, saw her going to the library and studying and dedicating her time to her, to her work and her studies and talking to her teachers, and they encouraged her to apply to go to college. And because of those librarians, she did, and she got scholarships. She graduated from the University of Arizona and then became a teacher and taught at Rincon High School. Anybody went to Rincon? <laughs> so she was there in the, I guess, late 50s, early 60s when uh, Rincon just started. 
And she also became really influential in the bilingual education um, efforts and worked with Hank Oyama, with Maria Orquides, Rosita Cota, and many others. And because of their work, that uh, stimulated federal legislation for bilingual education. And my uncle, who's right next to her, um, he was much shorter, I mean, shorter than her, but then he ended up being like 6'4", so he was much taller than she. Um, but anyway, he um, did not get a college education, but he was very, very intelligent, and uh, he actually co-wrote a math book with his high school teacher and another student. And, uh, but he wanted to work. He got married and had five boys to raise, and so he worked in the copper smelter in Douglas for 30 years. So in our family, hard work, that ethic, was really instilled. And my grandfather, Tata Rafael, instilled the importance of getting an education. Even though he only went to the third grade, I believe, he knew that that was the key to, to success, to opening doors for his family. Next slide, please. And so as we're talking about foundations and how we are solid and we build on those foundations. This is a picture of the women in my family who have served as, a, as role models for me and who gave me a solid, strong foundation. These are strong Latina women in my family. That was on my 18th birthday and also the, the day I found my first gray hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was like minutes before that picture was taken. Oop, pluck it out. <laughs> Now I get it tinted, otherwise I'd be fully gray. But anyway, <laughs> TMI. <laughs> um, so these women, the, the one, the lady uh, to the far left is my Nana Dolores, my grandmother, and I was named after her. And um, the woman sitting down is my aunt, Tia Lupita, who had rheumatoid arthritis. She got that when she was like in her early 30s. But she raised, helped raise five boys my cousins, and uh, it was amazing. This is in Douglas in the backyard of my aunt and uncle's home. But they were, they were kind. They were healers, too, of, of many ways. They used the oral tradition. My grandmother, my mom, my aunt, all of them um, had dicho, sayings, proverbs, that helped us when we were growing up on the values of our culture, of, of our way of being. And the one holding the piñata is my mom. And uh, they're all gone now, but they're with me in my heart. And um, as I was saying about my grandmother, she was a healer of many ways. I mean, she was so kind and generous. And um, I remember even with the dog, the family dog, she would make the dog scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> but, and as I said, she would make things better. I mean, family problem situations would be resolved in the kitchen con un cafecito y pan dulce, you know, with coffee and a, a bit of sweet bread. And of course, Vicks. She always had Vicks, and I was always slathered in Vicks. <laughs> but there was one saying she would always tell us, her grandchildren, and that was, no hay mal que por bien no venga, which you could translate it as, every cloud has a silver lining. So she was very positive and optimist. And my mom also had sayings, and the one that I remember the most is el que persevera alcanza, which means he or she who perseveres will reach his or her goals. And so that, that's what I keep in my heart, their words, their wisdom. So my family, as many of yours and, and those of our students, have gone through challenges in life, but have a strong foundation. And having that and coming here to Pima and working with all of you because all of you, every single one of you, have an impact in our learners' lives and their families and generations to come. Because if we get one student in, then they'll spread the word to their relatives, to their younger brothers and sisters, and to their neighbors, and they'll, they'll come and join us too. So together, moving forward with love and care, we are able to help them and help ourselves find success. Next slide, please. Speaking of struggles, we all faced one together, collectively, and that was the global pandemic. That was pretty incredible and amazing how we all came together and got through it for our students. So let's think back to 2020 for a moment. In the face of an unprecedented challenge, the college responded rapidly, effectively, 
and lovingly. And I'll talk more a little bit about the lovingly part in a moment. In three weeks, we pivoted our programs, courses, and services to a virtual world. We all got a crash course on Google Meets and Zoom. By putting our students, our learners first, and meeting their needs, we were successful in the most difficult of circumstances. And thank you for that. I will always be grateful. And let's give all of you a hand for your, your part in making this possible. With the digital divide, I'll just share a couple of things. The pandemic revealed that many of our learners did not have access to the devices that they would need to be successful in a new virtual modality. And in response, IT worked with our library to provide students with laptops, iPads, and hotspots. And using the library's existing materials checkout processes, that allowed us to implement the program to quickly and efficiently. So by Thanksgiving of 2020, 1,005 students had checked out a laptop or an iPad from the library. In addition, 237 students had checked out a Wi-Fi hotspot. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's important to note that though COVID has abated learners' need for devices, it, um, in the spring of 2023, students checked out, this spring of 2023, students checked out over 1,700 laptops or iPads and over 400 Wi-Fi hotspots. So we continue to help provide access to our students. And that's caring. That's the love that we have for our students. Next slide, please. So you can see a couple of quotes here, and I'll, I'll read them. I know you can read them, but I think it, it'll have more impact if we read it together, and I'll read it out loud. Our society needs to reestablish a culture of caring. And that was by Nelson Mandela. And Bell Hooks wrote in, in her book, um, All About Love, we are taught to believe that the mind, not the heart, is the seat of learning. Many of us believe that to speak of love with any emotional intensity means that we will be perceived as weak and irrational. So let's think about that. Is it weak to talk about love? No, that's our humanity. That's who we are, and that's why we do what we do. That's why we're here to help our students, to help our community, and love is the main thing. And it's amazing to see how everyone at Pima, our K through 12 and university partners, come together and collaborate and provide our learners the best possible ways to, to reach their educational goals. And as many of us know, our students are one crisis away from dropping out. They may have a flat tire as they're coming to take a midterm. And then that has a domino effect and they may not be able to take the midterm or they can't afford the flat tire, how are they going to get to class? May they miss other classes, other days? Or maybe they have to take their grandmother to the emergency room. So life happens and we're lucky to have the power to help these students as to achieve their goals. And that's because we care. Another way to build a strong foundation is to nourish our hearts. Being kind, thoughtful, respectful with one another, being loving and caring is not a sign of weakness. It's what makes us human. It brings us together. We don't have to agree on everything, but as long as we respect each other and listen to each other and our differences as we work together, we must be aware of each other, our approach, our tone, our language, even our body language. Humanity and education and, relate, and relationships are central to learning and to creating a sense of belonging and safety for everyone, for employees and for students. We also need to elevate our learners' voices, find out what they want, what they need in teaching and learning, and do everything possible to provide that. We should be, in a, you've heard me say this before, student ready and not expect our students to be college ready. We need to love our students that we currently have, not long for the students that we used to have or the students we wish we had, but we must love the students that we have. So 
Let's go to the next slide, please. As we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, the centrality of that is found in our mission. Our mission is empower every learner every day with, for every goal. Every learner, no matter where they are in life, no matter where they were born. Our learners' differences and our colleagues' differences make us stronger and enrich the college. We are proud to have been one of the few community colleges in the United States to have developed a diversity, equity, inclusion plan in 2017. And now we're reworking that. And we must be proud to be weaving DEI into every aspect of the college. We are all united in the promise and power of higher education, and that's how we should move forward. We're a proud, long-time Hispanic-serving institution and a proud minority-serving institution. So our mission also means that we must create spaces in which all learners thrive, reach their personal goals, and engage with all of us to reach economic mobility and belonging. Okay, next slide, please. So we have our successes, oh, our progress. We have so much to be proud at Pima. Are you proud of Pima? Yes, absolutely. It's wonderful to work at a school dedicated to diversity, to learner success, and to meeting the community needs and to innovation. So we need to interact more with the community and understand what their needs are for us to help them because we are Pima Community College. So the dedication also takes physical shape with our centers of excellence that are being developed at each campus. The buildings, as you can see in, in the downtown campus, are spectacular. And so is the teaching and learning that go alongside aside with that too. We have our Center of Excellence in Applied Technology at the downtown campus where we had a ribbon cutting of the Advanced Manufacturing Building in the spring. At East, we have the IT Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. And at the Northwest campus, we have at the, uh, the Science and Engineering uh, Center of Excellence is being developed. And I'll tell you a little bit of, more about that one because you know a, a bit more of the others, but the Science and Engineering one, that they're planning to have an integrated research center, which includes a traditional research space, a discovery center, and a maker space similar to the one at East Campus. The faculty will receive professional development in culturally responsive pedagogy to improve STEM student success. Every STEM student will participate in at least one CURE. CURE stands for Course Undergraduate Research Experience in their academic pathway. And we will be developing pathways in climate action and sustainability. Yes. At West Campus, we're continuing to, with the construction for the uh, Health Professions um, Center of Excellence. And also, we're working to develop on the um, Center of Excellence for the Arts, as well as we have the hospitality leadership at Desert Vista Campus. Yes. <laughs> oh, going back to the, the um, arts. So we brought back mariachi courses and ballet folklorico. <laughs> and we're also working um, with the public, public Safety Center of Excellence, too, that's right now at 29th Street. So we're very proud of all of these centers of excellence. But let's talk about our learners, our students. Next slide, please. I want to share a little bit about four of our amazing students, and their stories are unique, and their accomplishments are extraordinary. So the first one you see there to the left is Teresa Billick. So one of 60 learners nationwide, she was one of them, to receive the Jack Kent Cook Foundation's Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship for 2023. This award is worth as much as $55,000 a year to complete a bachelor's degree. She earned from Pima College an Associate of Science degree. 
and she will be attending the University of Arizona College of Environmental Science in the fall. She intends to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Sustainability, Leadership, and Communication before and then a master's degree. So next we have Nicholas Fimbres, who graduated in May of 2023 with an Associate of Liberal Arts. And his career goal is to teach math at, a co at the college level. He chose to attend Pima because it offers classes in partnership with the Santa Cruz Center in Nogales, Arizona. Yes. The next student you see there is Caleb Bailey. He's a Tucson native, 2019 graduate from Choya High School. Yay, Choya. <laughs> Enrolled at the U of A and switched to virtual learning brought about uh, by COVID made him reevaluate his priorities. So he enrolled at Pima and started on a new major, digital and film arts. He hopes to go back to the U of A in 2024 or 2025. And he also started a Black Student Union Club through the student, through student Life in 2022. <laughs> and the final student you see there is Namrata Patel. She had years of experience working at her parents' hotels, but no formal education in hospitality leadership. During the pandemic, she attended Pima Online from Chicago. She graduated in December of 2022 with an Associate in Applied Sciences in Hospitality Leadership. She received in 2022 an, the National Outstanding E-Learning Student Award, which recognizes an, a distinguished e-learner who has an exemplary uh, member of her community. So we're very proud of her too. And all of you helped to contribute to those students' success. And those are just a few students, a handful. Imagine your influence and impact with all of our students. Next slide, please. Speaking of students, you'll see in this slide a panel of students. So I th last week, I'm, my time frame is going. <laughs> I think it was last week we had the chancellor's retreat. We had two days. One day was for directors and above, and the second day was for the ELT only. So um, I wanted ELT, I wanted all of us to hear the voices of our students, to elevate the student voice, as I mentioned, in nourishing that culture of caring. So um, we had students from the various centers of excellence come and answer questions um, about their experiences and the impact that the centers of excellence have had on them. And uh, one of the questions that was asked was, what would you not change at Pima College? And invariably, every single one said instruction. The instructors, the faculty, also their, the advising staff, they said they couldn't have proceeded without them, with their support. So it was just amazing. So during my time as interim chancellor, I will be focusing on certain priorities, and I'll be discussing this later with the members of the board. But I want us to all work together in centering ourselves in the following goals, and you can see them listed there in the whiteboard. Improving enrollment, retention, and learner success. So that means using and implementing proven and high-impact strategies to increase enrollment, including our new learners and retaining our existing ones. So we have students, let's keep them and have them reach their goal. And that also means completing, finally, guided pathways and continuing to expand new ways in which Pima meets the needs of the new majority, majority learners and our adult learners. We also want to ready the college for artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and augmented reality. Another priority is enhancing a culture of care and equity, committing to social justice and equity focusing on employee satisfaction and engagement by developing plans and opportunities for improving our college employee satisfaction survey. Another one also to commit to environmental justice. The next priority, stewardship and college effectiveness and committing to a culture of innovation and making sure that we're meeting the needs of the community and of our students and looking, doing assessment of the whole college and how everything is working along with our strategic plan. And the final one is ongoing priorities, 
that are equally as important, but that we, but they're not new. We keep on working on them. And as Board Chair Riel said, preparing the college for a reaffirmation of accreditation. And you all probably, you have on your chairs kind of the basics, 101 high accreditation, HLC. And this afternoon, we have plenty of sessions that give you more uh, in-depth detail about the Higher Learning Commission and the various criteria. Because reaffirmation of accreditation is not just the Office of the Provost, it's not the criterion leads, it's all of us. Because if we don't get our accreditation, our reaffirmation of accreditation, then we don't get financial aid. If we don't get financial aid, we can't help our students. So this is an important priority for all of us. And of course, continuing with our centers of excellence, and we want to transform to low-cost course materials by expanding OER, open educational resources, and reduce cost educational materials. And of course, continuing focusing on continuous improvement. Next slide, please. So here in this picture, we have Pima employees helping at the Japanese Gardens of Tucson and taking part of a Ben's Bells event. Both were part of Pima's participation in the United Way's Day of, Days of Caring. They're just two examples of your support of our community. As you know, throughout the year, we sponsor events that draw our neighbors to our campuses and centers. In February 2023 alone, there were 6,706 attendees at 34 college-sponsored events. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And we have other events. For example, in May, hundreds of community members attended El Pueblo Fiesta at the El Pueblo Learning Center, where families enjoyed a community fair and mariachi music. Each fall, also, at the Northwest Campus, we tr it's transformed by a 1,000 fourth through eighth graders attending the Arizona STEM adventure. So that's also a wonderful community event that we have. So um, today, many of you also brought donations to our food pantries, and I want to thank you for that. Our students thank you. Helping our students holistically is directly involved with our learner success. At our chancellor's retreat, we did the same thing. We, we asked everyone to bring um, items for the food pantry. And you know how much it yielded for those two days? 400 pounds of donations for our Aztec Resource Centers. So thank you, everyone. And I'm really looking forward to working with all of you for this academic year. And remember, Pima Community College is the heart of the community. And now it gives me great pleasure to invite the acting provost, Dr. Jeff Tees, to join us on the stage. Let me share a little bit about uh, Dr. Tees. He has over 23 years of experience in higher education. Previously, he served as Dean of College Readiness and Student Success here at Pima also Dean of Academic Studies at Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and as faculty at Central Arizona College. He holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Higher Education from the University of Arizona. Dr. Thies enjoys working with cross-functional teams of dedicated staff and faculty to implement changes supporting equitable student outcomes. Let's welcome our acting provost to the stage. Thank you, Dolores. Hard to follow up that one. I'll give it my best shot. Be a little more brief. Great morning. We're raising the bar. Great morning. There we go. Welcome to All College Day. I hope everyone's having a great morning so far. I will tell you I'm excited about taking on this new role as the acting provost but I have no uh, theater or drama experience at any point in my career. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of the history of my work here at Pima Community College, but through a different lens. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at the three visuals 
that represent my time over the last eight years at Pima Community College. First, the rock climber. When I took the job as the executive director of developmental education, I was handed a, um, a redesigned plan and an office. And so that's how I felt at first. I knew I had this monumental task. At the time, I was an office of one. I hadn't had a chance to meet a lot of you in your different roles, so that was kind of my uh, reflective experience on, on the role. As we worked through the DevEd redesign, one of the key pieces that we would talk about on a regular basis is this idea of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And one of the key words in that growth mindset concept is the word yet. So yet was my uh, virtual meeting background for, for a few years. Unfortunately, many of you thought I was selling high-priced coolers. <laughs> or possibly I had an affinity for the Himalayan um, <laughs> friend of Bigfoot. <laughs> that last photo on the far right is a nice elk up in the White Mountains. During the COVID years, I did get a chance to spend a little more time up there at work from home policy. I will tell you that I had a great opportunity to take that shot, the photo of course, uh, of a regular, um, a regular occurring visitor nearby where we stayed. So I do plan on moving on from that elk. So you creative minds, if you have any ideas in my acting provost role of what that should be, please send them my way. Now I'd like to shift the conversation to all of you. What an incredible year we had last year. Staff, if you were involved in continuous improvement in your position, your department, your area, maybe it was you attended the data summit, maybe your department did something incredible, something new, something that was focused on continuous improvement, please stand. Please stand. Staff, I, I don't think we got everybody's great efforts last year represented that one. So think about success initiatives you might have been involved in. Maybe you supported my role and were part of the Sense survey review. Maybe you were part of the first gen program that started last fall. If you were a part of one of those or some other way in which you supported student success, please stand and be recognized. And faculty and instructors, I didn't forget about you. As we heard from Dolores, the students told us last week how important that instruction is. So the faculty and instructors that revolved in high impact practices, things like IBEST, undergraduate research, service learning, implementing 21st century skills, global awareness, student success courses, please stand to be recognized. And I'm hoping a lot of you could have stayed standing. Think of the culture of inquiry activities. We had two data summits that we had never done before. We had program review. We have a SLAW group, and that's not from culinary. That is the student learning outcomes group. We had a review of SESI and FESI to see what our students were talking about and thinking about on, on what's happening in the classroom. We had a tremendous work with faculty senate on the productive grade rates and what we could do to improve the productive grade rates. So if you're involved in any of that work, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> this is the type of work that allows us to empower every learner for every day, for every goal. Thank you. So in the acting role, I'm going to, I'm going to run through uh, several items that is going to be the focus of our team. First off, just want to recognize that the office itself is about providing quality learning experiences for our community and beyond. 
The team itself is responsible for ensuring that those experiences are relevant, they're current, and they prepare students to be successful in their next step. They're, they're part of their next learning journey. The challenge that we're going to focus on, not that there aren't several, but we're really going to spotlight the lens of institutional target two. And I'm sure all of you have memorized our strategic plan. <laughs> so go to 19, page 19 in your mind. Oh wait, we'll just put it up here for you and make it a little easier. This is the target that talks about doubling the completer counts of Hispanic or Latino, American Indian, Alaska Native, and black or African American learners by 24, 25. Right? This is an opportunity for us to change the community. It's also an indication of some of the work that we still need to do. So how do we get that work done this year? The philosophy is something that we could probably use this time of year. So think about ice, think about cooling down. The I, innovating inwardly, right? Take a look at what resources can be shifted to maximize learner success. What processes can change within what we do to be more efficient? Innovate inwardly to improve. We heard from our chancellor about the culture of caring. Several uh, student success teams were implemented last year at different campuses with that same baseline foundation of a culture of caring. Look into the possibilities of how it is that you can change your daily routine at the college or your meeting structure, your colleagues at the campus to embrace that concept of a culture of caring. And last, the E's, and you've heard me say and talk about these before. Evidence informs our decisions and we need to make those decisions with an equity-minded lens. So we'll take that philosophy and we'll apply it to these priorities. We will focus students slash learners at the center of these four priorities. The chancellor's goals that were already mentioned. The Higher Learning Commission's reaffirmation process, as you've heard multiple times already. A reboot of guided pathways and a focus on digital learning. So lastly, a mantra for me to work through and for you to remind me of, we are going to focus on improving, following through on things we've started, and limiting the new. And while we do that, improve, follow through, and limit the new, don't forget the ice. Thank you, have a great morning. Uh, interesting fact about Jeff, he's hit the Arizona triple. He graduated from Arizona, NAU, and ASU. So he's a wildcat lumberjack devil. Do we have any others in the audience? <laughs> and Dolores, I, kn I know we use terms like interim and acting, but the fact of the matter is she's in the chair. She's doing the job. She's the boss. So let's make sure we support them, it's not easy. All right, now I know this is a moment many of you have been waiting for. Cheer if you own a pet. There's something about pets that makes us happy. Let's take a look at our first Pima pet video. <laughs> Pima's Top Pets, Part One.
you. Let's hear it for our pets. Got more coming up. Tucson's warm community brings us together to advocate and support each other at any given time. As human beings, we need a sense of belonging, and that sense of belonging is what connects us to the many relationships that we develop. For more than 30 years, Pima Community College and the United Way of Tucson and Southern Arizona have built a strong connection with each other and our community through service, support, and action. Mr. Tony Penn is president and CEO of United Way of Tucson and Southern Arizona. Please give a warm welcome to Tony. Hey, let's begin uh, my comments today by first giving a round of applause to our great MC this morning. Greg, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Greg for that uh, great introduction. Uh, you know, I do have to, uh, one bone to pick. Uh, one thing I learned as a speaker early is that never follow kids and an animal act, you know, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks so much uh, to uh, the chancellor uh, um, and um, also Greg, the uh, acting chancellor, and to the governing board uh, this morning. Give them all of a round of applause for And uh, what a great opportunity to be able to address the amazing staff team of Pima Community College. Uh, all of you deserve a round of applause, and I have no doubt, in fact, I've got complete confidence that uh, you're going to do fantastic on the recertification of accreditation, and I already know it, so give yourselves a round of applause for doing well in advance. I know you're going to do great. I know you're going to do great. Uh, and besides, uh, here um, in the gym, as Greg has already uh, shared with us today, uh, if you're not excited about this coming year, uh, that if you're not breaking a sweat already, because uh, you're right here in the gym, home of the mighty Aztecs, give them a round of applause this morning, okay? If you're not breaking a sweat already, you're not doing it right, as the coach would say, okay? Uh, but uh, thanks so much uh, for this privilege, this opportunity to be able to come share with you just a couple things uh, this morning. First of all, is that um, your United Way of Tucson and Southern Arizona celebrated its 100th year in 2022 of service actually on the ground here in Tucson and Southern Arizona. And on behalf of the 300,000 kids, families, and seniors, whose lives were positively impacted and touched by your United Way, uh, I came to say thank you. Uh, so give yourselves a round of applause for making that happen and touching those lives. And here's what's amazing about the relationship that uh, Greg already mentioned, the 30 plus years relationship uh, between the Pima Community College and your United Way is that it's not only had an impact on those folks, but uh, I'm here to share with you just for a second my story, and that is that uh, I have been a fan of community college for many, many years. Community college provides that significant pathway for many of us who come from humble beginnings to get an opportunity to finish our education. It was the fact that uh, I ran out of money in college my first year. And I wound up uh, having to find a path to be able to get to that engineering degree, which meant so much to me. And it was the opportunity to be able to go to the Air Force. And it was my credits from the Community College of the Air Force, Community College of the Air Force, uh, which combined to give me an opportunity uh, to finish that engineering degree with electronic systems technology, graduate cum laude, but it was because of the community college system that gave me the opportunity. It was not just me, but my wife, who is a retired judge, has her own story of a path through um, St. Philip's Community College, part of the Alamo Community College District back in San Antonio, which gave her the opportunity to not only finish her college degree, but go to law school, become a judge, and also uh, be able to serve on the bench for 14 years, not just in Texas, but also here 
in Pima community in, in Pima uh, on the Justice Court and Superior Court uh, as a pro tem, and but it started with community college. It started with community college. So I'm glad to get the opportunity to give my testimony to all of you about the significant work that you're doing to make that success happen. But also I wanted to share on behalf of those 300,000 kids, families, and seniors that many of you who've contributed to the United Way campaign over the years that you've made an impact not only on their lives, but on the lives of many. And I would encourage you to continue to make that connection and that contribution happen. But I wanted to also make sure that many of you really understand that it's reciprocal. It's not a one-way street, the campaign that we run here um, on this campus, but also the opportunity for benefits for you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors. Uh, how many know that uh, you can get your taxes done for free by United Way, and it's up to a threshold of $76,000 that you can get your taxes done for free? Anybody take advantage of that? If you have, give some, some, some applause today. If you haven't, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, because we maximize those refunds through United Way to give you an opportunity uh, to be able to do that. I bring that up today because I've got one United Way story that I'm gonna share with you that is so important that started right here on this campus. And for the sake of being able to uh, protect uh, the identity, uh, I'm just gonna use her name, Jane. Jane went to one of our centers to get her taxes done for free, she thought. Of course, we were able to do that for her, maximize her refund, help her get that earned income tax credit back because Jane happened to be a single parent mom. But while the tax preparer was getting the information to be able to maximize her refund, he asked some probing questions to Jane. And he found out through that inquiry that Jane had recently had to drop out of the nursing program right here on this campus. But because of our great relationship with Pima Community College and because of the fact that United Way not only has a, a program related to doing taxes but educational attainment from early childhood education all the way through post-secondary education is a strategic imperative for United Way. We helped her to get back in Pima Community College. She graduated with her associate's degree, and we, that's not the end of the story. <laughs> not only did she graduate with her associate's degree, she actually went on because we've got a great relationship with the University of Arizona. She finished a four-year degree in nursing, and today she is one of the great staff members over at TMC today in nursing that has provided the great essential resources and needs. And in fact, uh, we even had a conversation with her during the pandemic, uh, and we all know what a challenging time it was for our healthcare sector. But we know that because of her education, because of her start right here, but also um, I'm glad to be able to say that your United Way played a role in her overall success. Your United Way. So listen, folks, it's reciprocal. Uh, we have many opportunities, many initiatives. I just named one with our VITA program, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. But we have many, many, many initiatives, many program opportunities that you as a staff team should take advantage of. Go to our website, check us out, unitedwaytucson.org. And while you're there, look at those opportunities and tell your neighbors, tell your friends, because it is reciprocal. It's not just one-way street. 
that you give and nothing comes out. Yes, let me share with you that plenty comes out of the investment that you make in your United Way that blesses our entire community and can bless your family too. Thanks for the opportunity to be able to share today. Thank you, Tony. As he mentioned, there are a lot of partnerships. Yesterday, members of his team uh, for Cradle to Career were meeting in the new building, and I know we're already planning a big event for students for the fall of 2024. Uh, we're truly honored to be a part of such an important community endeavor. You know who else is an important part of our community? That's right, pets. <laughs> Video number two. <laughs> <laughs> Pima's Top Pets, Part 2. Stay tuned because we have a couple more coming up. Now, here's an example of attendance showing up where it pays off. So you're about to have your prices right moment. Who would like to win a gift card? <laughs> Christy just gave me the winners of our attendance tracker. So if your name is called, please come up on stage and Christy will present you with a gift card sponsored by Pima's Foundation. And speaking of the foundation, oh, actually, winner number one. Are you ready? Karina Garcia. Come on down. Winner number two, Tiffany Amaretta Young. Winner number three, Rosa Maria Cardenas. Winner number four, Sylvia Lustenau Romero. And what do you know? Winner number five from the foundation, Lance Jones. Come up if you can. Christy has your gift certificate. And again, speaking of the foundation, at this time I would like to invite Marcy Euler, president of Pima Foundation.
Thank you, Greg, and congratulations to our winners. We're thrilled to be able to partner with you. So I love today's theme. It is building on a strong foundation, and that's who we are. We are a strong foundation. We are the philanthropic partner to Pima Community College, and we support the students, the faculty, and the programs that matter to you in this room, to the learners that you teach, to the community at large, and to uh, the entire region of South Southern Arizona. So I wanted to make sure that you know that we, the foundation, are here to serve you. It's not the other way around. We are here to serve you. And so for that, first, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your donations that you make to the foundation. I want to thank you for the contributions you make to United Way that come to us. As Tony was speaking earlier, um, he was talking about the gifts to United Way. Some of you designate those to Pima Foundation to a fund that matters to you in your heart, and we are appreciative of that. And a number of you also make gifts through payroll deduction. Super easy to do through human resources, and they make a huge difference. Currently, we have about $1,200 per pay period that is coming to us, and that translates in across 26 uh, pay periods into several tens of thousands of dollars. So it makes a huge difference in transforming lives. A couple of fun things that we are doing this fall we want to make sure that you know about. First of all, the, has anybody ever been to the Rotary Club of Tucson Car Show at the Gregory School? Okay. So, we want that to be a much bigger cheer in the future. Uh, Pima Foundation, and there's a reason for that. Pima Foundation is one of the beneficiaries of the proceeds from that event for the next three years. And that, those funds will be directed toward the Center of Opportunity Project that has culinary, IT, and building and construction technology training going on on site at the Center of Opportunity to help those people who were formerly homeless move from that situation to not just a sustainable living wage, but into a thrivable living wage that keeps a roof over their head food on the table, and their children safe. And so please support us. We'll send out in, thank you. We'll send out in the Pima News uh, how to buy those tickets. Any ticket you buy through that link, $4 will automatically be directed to us, and then we will receive additional proceeds after the event. And if you would like to go to the event, it's on Saturday, October 21st. Um, and the ticket is also the raffle for the car, which is sitting in the automotive technology. If you want to see a beautiful white 2017 Stingray Corvette to see what you could win, head on over. Second thing, uh, oh, and we also need volunteers, and it happens to coincide with the United Way Days of Caring timing, and so we are trying to partner with a number of groups, but we would love to have Pima uh, staff and faculty and employees help with the volunteering. And since I'm in charge of volunteers for the car show, I really need your help. <laughs> Uh, second thing that we're doing that's very fun, Pima College Day at the Arizona Diamondbacks. It will be Sunday, October 1st at 110 at Chase Field. It is the last game of the season against the Houston Astros. And the ticket sales will go on soon, and we'll send them through Pima News. We are hoping to have at least 200 people participate. Invite your friends to both of these events, and please join us and spread the word so that we can keep telling the great stories stories about Pima. Lastly, I just wanted to very briefly talk about what we support. We support academic programs, we support scholarships, and we support important student success initiatives. Things like the Aztec Resource Center that is providing food for those students who are experiencing scarcity in their pantries. Your investment helps us to do the important work of caring for our community and the community at large. So you can, it's easy for you to help us. You can visit pimafoundation.org. You can participate in, pay, sorry, I pop my peas a lot when I talk in a microphone. You can participate in payroll deduction. You can make a gift via credit card. You can write a check to the foundation. 
You can buy one of our car show or Diamondback tickets. You can make a planned gift if you choose, but your investment matters. You are transforming lives through your work with Pima Foundation. Thank you for that, and thank you for letting us serve you. It is our privilege, and we look forward to keeping the great work that you are doing part of our work to serve this community. Have a great All College Day. Uh, thank you, Marcy, uh, to you and your team for all that you do for our programs and our students. At this time, we will focus on our Pima Inspiration Awards. What makes Pima Community College special? It is the rich diversity that makes up the Pima family. The students that come to Pima for a better life are impacted by the time and care that we give to them. This year, we would like to introduce the Pima Inspiration Award. This award is given by students to honor employees and board members that have made an impact during their time at Pima. My name is Marcos Lopez and I completed the CNA program and I am looking to further my education in nursing. I just enjoy helping people. I mean, it's just something that's in me. <laughs> when I took the state test, I was a nervous wreck. I was on the bus and I cried all the way to the uh, campus because I was so nervous couple of days later found out I had passed everything. I had good classmates was one thing we helped each other out but beyond them it was the instructors. There was two instructors that were very caring and were there whenever we needed them. So Miss Carol Williams she was our instructor in preparing us for the test. Brandy Bride she was our skill instructor. So Carol and Brandy impacted my life um, by making me successful in passing all my tests. They were part of getting me hired into the VA hospital where I am currently employed. They're just family. I mean, I, I, I feel so comfortable with them. I can go up to them and talk to them about anything and they're always there. We text each other. I call them, they'll call me. I go visit them and hang out with them at the campus and stuff. And we just talk. They're, we're very um, close, not just with them, but uh, our little group that we had as students, we're, we're all considered a family. We all keep in touch. Good morning, I want to start off by welcoming all of you to All College Day. My name is Marcos Lopez and I come from a very small town, if it's even considered a town, but a place that I love and a place that watched me grow up in my beloved continental just east of Green Valley. As a child, I dreamt of being a doctor and being that I was from a small place and we were barely making it as a family. As my parents both worked in the pecan fields, I thought to myself, this is not going to be possible. So I continued my education, graduated, and worked to help my family and myself. I received my certificate in travel and airline, but I did not pursue a career in the field. Although I love to travel, but it was not making me happy. So I moved on and worked in retail many years and assisted living for several years. And that's where I found my happiness. One day as I was on the reservation, as I am a Pascua Yaki member tribe, I saw a bulletin board advertising CNA classes at Pima College. I thought to myself, maybe I should give this a try. I have nothing to lose. So sure enough, I made the first step. I called the number and received all the information needed and a deadline to meet. After all the paperwork and documents were all done, the time had finally come. My first day of class was finally here. I remember walking in that morning, meeting the greatest group of girls that became family. 
not to mention the two great instructors I have met that inspired me and pushed me hard when times were rough. I have never met instructors like that that gave their all to see you succeed and that were there for you anytime you needed them. Instructors that cared and were there with you all the way through state testing. I was a nervous wreck and cried from the nerves, but my guardian angels were there to give me that final push. The ones that had faith in me and never had when I never had it on my own. Thanks to them, I did it as they believed in me and now have a full filling career at the VA hospital and will return to further my education in nursing. When I was asked to nominate one person, I thought that could not be possible. So at this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Carol Williams and Ms. Brandy Bride to the stage. They are not only my instructors and my inspiration, but they are my family. I struggled, I was confused, depressed, humiliated, and traumatized. Life was so hard because I didn't have any family members. I was hopeless and almost emotionally dead. Life was so difficult and meaningless. However, one lesson that Tucson has taught me while seeking asylum from political persecution and abruptly uprooting my whole life is that in the middle of chaos, trials, poverty, confusion, depression, humiliation, trauma, and death, life has a way of walking ourselves out through education. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jean-Steve Parfait Furanzima. Uh, I am a Puma Community College alumni. I graduated in 2018. Uh, thank you, Puma, again for uh, having me today. I say hi to my family back in Africa. They are watching live right now. <laughs> thank you for uh, the staff, the IT staff. To Christy and her entire team, thank you very much for inviting me to share my story. Christy was uh, also a member of the team which selected me to become the graduation speaker for the 2018 Pima Community College graduation ceremony. Further, I wanted to thank my Pima family for everything they have done to me. I am who I am because of the education and opportunity I received from you. My journey in the United States started in 2014 after I arrived in Tucson as an asylum seeker with a suitcase and $187. Life was very difficult. I couldn't work for a year due to my immigration status. I am thankful for a couple of families and churches that assisted me with food, transportation, and housing during the rough time. After getting asylum in January 2015, I started working two full-time jobs as a caregiver and one part-time job as an interpreter. Recently, I became a US citizen. 
Very proud of her. Since 2014, my dream has always been to work in higher education. I always wanted to work with students at college level. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I started my admission process with a couple of universities in the state, but I was rejected. It was discouraging. I remember one advisor from one of the universities, he told me that I would never succeed due my previous education. Fortunately, I got an admission from Pima Community College in 2017, and they accepted a few credits from my previous education, which is the reason I got my associate degree in one year. In May 2018, I graduated with high honors. I was the commencement speaker at the 2018 graduation ceremony. My speech, which inspired students to rise for peace and justice, was selected among the top 10 speeches in the United States by Magazine Domestion in 2018. I could not achieve my dream without Pima Community College staff, advisors, tutors, and professors. Today, I would like to honor three special people who impacted my life here at Pima Community College. Number one, Dr. Carmen Salvo Amavisca, my English professor. Thank you. Her English classes were extremely interesting helpful and, and informative. Her courses helped me to improve my English skills, such as writing a research paper, reading, grammar, APA format, citations, etc. <laughs> Furthermore, she did assist me with advice, corrections, and reviews when I was preparing my graduation speech. The second person, he's no longer with us, is the advisor Rob Carey. May his soul rest in peace. 24 hours after graduation in 2018, we attended a Friday de Kappa retreat at GCU. That's where the conversation started to transfer from Jesus here to GCU. He introduced me to a GCU advisor, and a few months later, I started my master's degree in public administration with an emphasis in government and policy. After 14 months, I graduated with honors. The third person is Mark Hanna. After finishing my degree at Pima Community College, we met in a restaurant, and he paid for the bill. He, uh, <laughs> thank you, Mark. And he advised me on how I should pursue my next steps. One of the challenges I had that time, I didn't have any scholarship. For some scholarship, it was late for me to submit the application. For others, I had to wait for the following academic year. However, it did not stop me. My wife and I decided to invest our savings in my master's degree and in her LPN. She graduated from Pima Community College with a health science in practical nurse. And the same year, that's when I got my master's degree. To be able to transfer from here to a grad program, I needed a reference letter to get approved. Mark was the one who wrote the reference letter. Those three people are very special to me. They are my inspiration. God used them to change and uh, help me to achieve my dream. Currently, I work at Grand Canyon University as an academic advisor for the international division. <laughs> my passion for working in higher education has been fulfilled. However, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm still hungry to achieve more. My next step is to add another second master's degree in education and maybe a PhD. <laughs> One more time, I wanted to thank the institution, all the staff, 
tutors and professors, you changed my life. You offered me a second chance. You accepted me while other schools rejected me. You selected me to be the commencement speaker in 2018. I will always be grateful for this institution. I hope that one day, maybe, I'll be back as a professor or as an administrator. Who knows? So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pima. God bless you. God bless Pima Community College. And always, God bless the United States of America. Thank you. So I would like to invite you. I know you're anxious to get to the next pet video, but let me just speak for just a minute, all right? So, um, so I'm, I'm greatly honored. Jean, thank you so much. I'm greatly honored by this. I love Pima Community College. And the reason I do is because I know it is the most important educational institution in our community. And the reason that is true is because of you, because you change the lives of the most vulnerable, the most needy people in our community go on to success because of what you as educators, as faculty, as staff, as administrators do at this college. You change not only their lives, you change the lives of their families. And for those who are first generation students, you not only change their lives, but you change the lives of their generations to come, their whole families to come, because once they've gone to college and they realize the benefits of college, it's much more likely that their families, their future families will go on to college. So I thank you, I thank you. You have made a change in this community. Give yourself a round of applause. You deserve it. Thank you for what you do. And, and inspiration, I'm, you know, inspiration works both ways. I was so inspired by Jean's speech, and he's right. He was picked as a, a national magazine, one of the 10 most inspirational commencement speech, speeches of that year, the only community college commencement speech. And he inspired me. And so you, as an educator, never know. And the truth of the matter is, he and I only really in interacted in like the green room at about before the uh, commencement uh, ceremony. So you just never know what, what, how you're going to inspire someone. So keep that in mind every day as you're in the classroom, or you're working as an administrator, or you're, you're on the staff, you're, you're a police officer, or you're a uh, maintenance person at this college. You just never know the inspiration you might leave for others. So thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you, Mark. And we really are truly proud of you, Marcos and Jean. And also to Carol, Brandy, Carmen, Rob, and Mark. We'll have you come back up for a group photo after our keynote speaker, who I am about to introduce. Frederick Chagag. Freddie is the founder and CEO of The Message. He inspires, educates, and creates healthy lifestyles as a motivational speaker. Dumpster diving, panhandling, and drinking were once everyday activities for Freddie. Despite a decade of alcohol addiction and time spent homeless, he transformed himself into a graduate with high honors. As a motivational speaker, he is on a mission to help others combat substance use and mental health issues. A local man has turned his life around while battling homelessness, substance abuse, and mental health issues. Now he wants to share his message of hope with others who may be struggling. For goodness sake, here's Bill Anderson. Four years ago, I was downtown, homeless, dumpster diving. Looking at Freddie Chagog, you wouldn't see the challenges that he has faced as recently as six years ago. I'll never forget when I was downtown and I was begging for change. And I remember being over by the Rich Carlton, and I remember a lady spitting on me, right? And I remember her throwing money at me. And I remember telling myself, like, this is where I'm gonna die at. 
Battling both mental health and substance abuse issues, he hit rock bottom. And for him, that pain was the only thing that inspired his journey to change. I always tell people like this with, with substance abuse. Who stops robbing banks if they never get caught? But he says with rehab, prayer, and work, life dramatically turned. And I met Freddie as he spoke about another step in his evolution, a partnership between Delaware County Community College and Westchester University. It's done wonders for me. The program allowed him to enroll in community college using grants, loans, whatever it took, and then transfer into Westchester with guaranteed scholarships, housing, and success coaching. Delaware County taught me how to be a great student. It taught me the system of college. Westchester is teaching me how to be a scholar. Because of this, Freddie's become such a proponent of education and the partnership that he feels duty-bound to travel and share his story through his company, The Message LLC. There's somebody right now struggling who doesn't believe that they can. There's somebody right now who's going to eat out of the dumpster today. There's somebody right now who's going to bury their son and daughter today. If they see and can relate to his new outlook on life. I used to believe that my life got better because I had a better car, I had a better house, because I had better stuff. I finally realized, and college taught me this, my life got better because I became a better person. And as he continues to spread his message, he also has something for the rest of us to consider. When you see that homeless person, be mindful and don't be judgmental because you don't know what somebody got in store for them. came from. Be a little less judgmental and take care of each other for goodness sake. I'm Bill Anderson. Good morning. Good morning. Arizona. This is my first time ever being here, right? So, uh, true story. First of all, before I go any anything, before I do anything else, I want to give honor to God because I know without him, I am not here. Right? Secondly, so when they reached out, uh, Chrissy called me. We had a wonderful conversation. And she was like, it's hot, right? And I was like, all right. And so it's like, she was like, it's dry heat, though. So I'm asking all these people, like, is it hot? So I'm getting here, and everybody keeps saying Arizona's hot. So I was like, man, it's just dry heat. I got off the airplane. <laughs> Woo! I was like, okay. So my name is Frederick. I go by Freddie. I only get called Frederick when I bother my wife, and that is a lot. So, uh, you know, it's funny, right? No matter how many times I present, no matter how many times I see that video. Every time I watch it, I get emotional because I'm reminded of how this started. There wasn't a such thing as keynotes and traveling. I never thought there was a second I would be here. I never thought I had the gifts and the tools to be here. I thought that I wasn't meant to be here in life. And it's funny, I get asked all the time, right? Freddie, how did you go from a homeless, dumpster diving, panhandling, drug addicted? Out of your mind, like, go, like how did you go from that to within seven years? Person in recovery, long-term sobriety. Family man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all, like truly. Family man, community member, volunteer, mentees, graduate of high honors, published writer, keynote, CV. How did you do, I even got a dog named Gemma. <laughs> How did you do all that? Here is your answer, support. See? I met educators like yourselves that didn't look at me as needing a hand out. They understood that I needed a hand up and they were gonna mold me into the person that I needed to be. Right? They didn't look at what I didn't have. They didn't look at my deficits. They didn't look at all my challenges. They said, no, you're good enough where you're at. 
What we're going to do is we're going to take what you got, we're going to give you our resources, and we're going to show you how to go on this journey. So they did that. But before I got to Arizona, <laughs> right, there's a story. So let me bring this back. Let me be very clear. My whole life I thought I was stupid, unworthy, and not meant to be here. I got lucky growing up. I come from my mother that went to treatment once when I was in third grade. She went for five days, and by God's grace and mercy, she'll celebrate 30 years of sobriety next month. I got very blessed growing up. Me and my mama, my only child, mama's boy. I'm a diehard Duke fan too. Ooh. Right? Okay, so I'm growing up, and growing up, let me be very clear. My mom did not drink. My mom wasn't a part of the normal things that go on in society. And what I've learned, we live in a society where stigma outweighs education. See, we live in a society where it's odd to talk about your mental health. We live in a society where it's odd to present and say, hey, I take mental health meds, I go to therapy. Because I grew up in a home like that, I unfortunately saw the realities of what mental health meant in this country, and I was bullied as a young child. That bullying led to all types of things going on, which then led to me making decisions, which then led to the drugs and alcohol and everything else. My first psych unit, I was nine years old. Oh, in the United Way piece, let me be clear. I remember them coming into our building and taking us out to paint. United Way's personal with me. So at nine years old, I go to my first psych unit. On top of that, the educational system I'm in, because you know we have these wonderful barriers and things in the system. And now that I'm in grad school, I'm getting my MPA too, yeah. <laughs> right? Now that I'm in grad school, they've exposed me to these things called the social determinants of health. And what they say is, when you're born into a certain situation, certain economic class, race, creed, color, all that stuff, that by the time you get a certain age, you'll be dead or in jail. Or you'll be in Harvard, depending on your environment. Well, just know I wasn't the one picked to go to Stanford. <laughs> but that's OK, because what I learned is it's not how you start, it's how you finish. <laughs> right? One of the things that bothers me when I hear people say, Freddie, we need more like you. People that can pull themselves up from the ground. Stop it. There's no such thing as a self-made man. I'm only up here because people like you poured into my life and uplifted me to get here. <laughs> what that has taught me is my doctorate, my master's, it's really not for me. See, it's for me to use to help the people behind me go through the door and don't have to go through the same issues I went through. You know what happens when we do that? We empower people to empower other people. That's how we end this wealth gap. That's how we end homelessness. Because what I'm learning as I go higher and sit in these rooms, a policy, you know what I'm learning? It's not an IQ issue. It's a help issue. So, my start leads to all types of stuff. I don't have to tell you what the life of addiction look like. Do the math. Turn on your local ch TV channel. It was ugly. Can't tell you how many institutions I've been in. And by the way, the educational system I first entered wasn't too good. So you got to forgive students when you meet them and they're not so open to trust you. Because the reality of it is, they might have come from a background where educators weren't so kind. So this leads, I don't know how many institutions, 30 some, I don't know, I don't remember. Psych units, hospitals, rehab, shelters, you name it, I lived it. Thank you for the food pantry too, because I remember the days I walked to the food pantry baking for food, and now I've been blessed to help feed other people at the food pantry. So all these things lead me to seven years ago, downtown dumpster, downtown homeless, dumpster diving, baker for change. I remember having my hand out by the Rich Carlton, 
because I had an idea. If I'm about to rich, they'll give me money. Just rich people. <laughs> well, I had my hand out. Woman walks past me. I said, hello, I'm having a very bad day. May I have some money? She looks at me. She spits on me. She says a racial epithet, and then she says, get a job. I thank her for that. I'm going to tell you why. Because that moment could have defined me. Instead, she didn't break my spirit. She just taught me that when I go higher, my job is to make sure nobody else is ever in that position. So, I end up, I'm asleep, praying I don't wake up. Man wakes me up. I said, listen, keep going. I am not good at life. I am a mistake. I'm not meant to be here. Let me die. He looks at me and says, brother, you ain't dying today. Here go a pillow and a bottle of water. I'm going to pray with you. He saved my life. I enter treatment. I call my mom. My mom was my own child. My wife can tell you that. Bad. I call mom. Ma. What, Freddie? Listen, I'm done. I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to get my life together. It's over. I quit. My mom says something to me I'll never forget. Freddie, I hope I didn't get sober to bury you because I will. I have accepted the drugs and alcohol are going to take you out of here. I'm over it. Well, when my mom gave up on me, I got hungry. See, what happened was I stopped counting my days. I started making my days count. Something changed. I left there, and it came to my mind. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to college. You know why? Because I always believed that college had the answers for life. I always believed that was the one building. That was the one place where I could find people, regardless of my race, regardless of my color, regardless of my economic status, regardless of my background, that, hey, you know what? Welcome. So I entered Delaware County Community College. Of course, none of you ever heard of it. <laughs> so I enter, right? And when I enter, I'll never forget. And I told y'all, I'm a person in recovery, seven years. I walk in there first day. I'm a diehard Green Bay fan, too, by the way. Diehard. Yeah, Arizona has caused me a lot of pain. So I entered Delaware County. I'll never forget it. First day, I walk on campus. I got Green Bay shoes. I got Green Bay shorts. I got Green Bay book bag. Now, I'm an 80s kid. I grew up on uh, Pop Tarts and Family Ties. I got Green Bay Trapper Keeper. You feel me? Listen. <laughs> I got Green Bay, I got Green Bay pencils, pens. And then my wife, right, I'm on Snap, taking a bus. My wife um, wrote me a note. She packed me a lunch, wrote me a note, said, have a good day, your first day, baby. I love you, I'm so proud of you. So I'm walking on campus, right, boom. And listen, I got to represent, so I got my Harry Tubman shirt on. You feel me? <laughs> I come on campus, I'm like, what up? My name's Freddie, I take mental health meds, I go to therapy, I'm so grateful to be here. I got a year of Friday, y'all! Yeah! <laughs> oh, shout out, right, shout out. But let me tell you something that's critical. Please hear me for all of you who work in this building. I remember the people that walked up and said, welcome. I also remember the people that said, eh. You know, it's funny what success does. Them saying, huh, now call me. You know what I learned? I forgive them. Hurt people hurt people. See, what I've also learned too is students can feel character. They can feel spirit. So my question to you is, when you first see a student, is your first thing uh, ID and social number, or is it hello? <laughs> Let me be very clear. Prisons say ID number. <laughs> this is college and education, baby. We get the opportunity to meet people where they're at and to love them. So when we first meet them, and if they've missed class, do you send the attendance policy or do you call them and ask them how they're doing? Because there's a difference. So I go up, Nate, and, and you know, we live in America, right? So we do this wonderful thing called placement testing. Because, you know, we need retention and we need all these stats. So I go up there, and they get my placement test. How I know I'll make it in life, how I know I've made it in life is when they allow me to sit in a room of policy about placement testing, because listen to this. I get up there, she says, welcome, go in. 
I went in, inflation test come up. What? Tic-tac-toe. Man, listen, that test, are you, I've been out of school for, I, I failed out of six colleges. I've been out of school for years. Why is Trig on here? Why, what? That, listen, uh, 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 eeny, meeny, miny, B. Come on, man, we gotta stop. We gotta stop with this. So, I get to the placement test, right? I get done, the lady walks up and says, congratulations. I was like, what's up? She's like, you tested in remedial. I was like, yes! <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I thought remedial meant AP. <laughs> so I'm walking around and I'm like, yo, I tested in remedial, what up? Yeah, me. Listen, I call my mom, you know, I always call mom. Yo! She's like, what? I'm like, man, your son is like that. She's like, we talking about, I said, I've been out of school six years, I'm in advanced classes. She was like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm in remedial. I said it with chest out. She said, Freddie, <laughs> remedial is the lowest classes on the campus, man. I said, for real? She said, yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> so all that swagger I had, I went back home. Now this is where the story gets interesting. I call this a life moment. I go back home, I tell my wife. I said, I, I'm not going back. She says, why? I said, college is above me. She said, what do you mean? I have tested in the lowest test on campus. There are gonna be people in that class that are 18, dual enrollment, young. I said, it's over. College is above me. I'm not smart enough nor good enough. That season in my life has passed. I'll just work my little job at Panera. Maybe I'll get a job at rehab and good enough. Let me tell you what I learned about relationships. Healthy people are not attracted to unhealthy people. How do I know that? Because my wife doesn't get the glory, but best believe she is the engine that what makes the story go. That woman made me believe in myself before I even saw it. And real easily, because she's not like me, she said, Freddie, go to class. <laughs> so I, I recently been re re officially married in June. And you know what I've learned? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so guess what Freddie did? I went to class. <laughs> so I go to class. I'll never forget it. All you professors and educators, please hear this. I'm about to give you a tutorial on how a woman changed the environment of her classroom. We get in there. Jamie Kelly DiMaggio, English 025, I'll never forget it. We get in there, and it's a six to nine Tuesday class, so you know what it is. And she says, class, welcome. She said, your first assignment is called identity. And I'm not gonna grade you based on the grammar. I'm gonna grade you based on the content. Whoever get the most real will get the best grade. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, well, what about like, you know, who you are? She said, listen, y'all don't need to know who I am and my background. It's my job to find out who you are so that you can know who you are so that you can go into the world and make it better. She didn't give us a 30 page syllabus. She didn't take the first 20 minutes of class to talk about what lab she worked at and all that. We know you got a doctorate. I know you're smart. She didn't give us the, if you, if you find the fish in the syllabus, I'll give you 500, she didn't do all that. And I know, listen, I know, you write these long syllabuses and they, they you know, email you and ask you the same stuff. I got mentees too, no matter how many times I tell them they ask me the same thing. <laughs> Welcome to the privilege of education. So, everybody's looking around like, this lady wants to know us? And, and listen, I'm one of them students, I raise my hand 30 times. <sighs> I work you out. And they always kill me, they'll be like, Freddie, I love your passion, see me at office hours. Guess what, I'm coming to that too. So, I'm sitting there. I said, are you sure you want to know about me? Because my story gets wild. She said, that's exactly what I want. So I wrote in there about digging out the dumpster. I wrote in there about being laughed at for my mental health. I wrote in there about being bullied. I wrote in there how bad it hurts when you tell somebody about your mental health, they look at you crazy. I wrote about all that. What she was teaching me is, when I write about my stuff, I take the stigma out of whatever they think about me. I finally got to talk my truth. And what somebody else thought about me didn't matter. And I remember her telling me, I'll never forget she said this, Freddie, when somebody throw mud, you throw fruit. 
Bless them, change you. This is English 025. You know what she was teaching me? And what I was finally realizing, W.E.B. Du Bois was right. Education is not supposed to be teaching work. Education is supposed to teach us life. So, I do that, I write the paper. I end up finding out about um, this conference. She tells me I'm going. I didn't want to go, but I went anyway. I never forget, I get there, you get this long sheet, and it says breakout and concurrent, and all these different things. I tap somebody next, I said, what's breakout and concurrent? He said, oh, this is workshop. I said, well, why don't they just name it workshop? <laughs> Students don't know all these theoretical terms, people. I remember they had a keynote, I called my mom, I said, yo, somebody's playing music. I thought a keynote meant a musical selection. <laughs> I had no idea that a keynote was somebody that talks. And you know what's funny? My greatest pain became my greatest fruit. So, I end up finding somebody there that knows the op-ed director of the Philadelphia Enquirer section. She asked me, do I have a collegial recovery program? I said, no. She said, do you have a story? I said, I got this paper on identity. I got an A on it. She said, cool, submit it. I did. Four months later, me, my wife, and my daughter, we're family in recovery. We're driving down to an AA meeting in New Jersey. My phone blowing up. They're like, Freddie, you on the front cover of the thing. What? I stop at the store. I get 200 papers. Listen, I ain't going to lie. I got to get one for Cuz OG. I got to get one for Grandma. I got to get one for Audie. Listen, and I'll never forget it. Get outside. It's me, my wife, my daughter. I open it up. My face is on the front page of the Philadelphia Enquirer op-ed section in college in recovery. Yeah! Yeah! English, English 025 did that. I came to this building on snap. I came to this building with no self-esteem. I came to this building not believing myself. But six months later, because an educator did not decide to put me in a box, because she decided that who I was was more important than what I was here for. She understood that the best way to educate me, it wasn't theoretical. It wasn't all these concepts. She understood the best way with me. Who is he? Why are you on this earth? What gifts you got? Then we educate. So, that ended up, they get a call from the president's office. They read the local paper. And she said, Freddie, I'm proud of you. We're going to help you. I said, all right, let's go. So then I meet my advisor, Mama Rose. We call her Rose Curse. I first meet her, I'll never forget. I walk in. I said, hi, my name's Freddie. I want to take this, this, this. She said, stop right there. I said, what? She said, first of all, who are you? I said, why? She's like, you don't, if you don't know who you are, how are you going to know where you're going? I said, well, I thought you were supposed to help me with classes. She's like, I am. But I first need to know who you are before I can sign you up with classes. Because my job isn't just put you in class. My job is to make ed education uplift your life. I had never met somebody that cared about me. Do you know how far it goes when you just tell a student, hello? Do you know how far it goes when you tell them that you care about them? So she sat there and said all this. She said, Freddie, um, tell me about your life. So I told her. She said, listen, this is a safe space. May, may I be comfortable and talk to you, Candy? I said, yes. She said, I need you to do a favor. I said, what? She said, I need you to clean your house up. I need you to be a better husband. I need you to start working out with your wife. I need you to get your whole family in therapy. I need you to do all these things. I said, why? She said, your ability to succeed is not an IQ issue. It's not a gift issue. Your ability to be successful is going to be based on a healthy foundation. Then you'll see all the rewards of keynoting, of graduating, and of all that stuff. And you know what I figured out? She's right. Health really is wealth. I can't do this job without being healthy first. Then she said, here's your financial aid paper. Now, she didn't give me the paper to financial aid and said it's in that building. She gave me the paper to financial aid, and she walked me over to financial aid. And then, as she walked me over, right? As she walked me over, she said, this is Brother Freddie. He's here to do well. Hi, blah, 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 Mr. Such and Such. She got the financial aid. She said, he's here to learn, blah, blah, blah. Can we sit in a meeting? I'm going to sit in with you so he can learn this. Wow. I started feeling like a community. That led to me learning who the janitor in the building was. We started um, 
you know, exchanging books and doing all types of stuff. Found out he feeds the homeless too. The cafeteria worker found out her daughter struggles with mental health. Guess what? We now all pray together. See, what I was realizing is this building is a community. See, when it says community college, it says community first for a reason. So, it felt like I was going to Thanksgiving dinner twice a week and I got homework. <laughs> Flat out. Well, what ends up happening is I end up graduating. I do a, uh, I, I, I get asked to go to a conference and I didn't want to go again. And I went and I said, well, everybody here is going to have doctorates and masters. And I'll never forget my teacher told me, she said, you got a doctorate in life. I said, okay, I went, I presented, I get a call from a school, put my first check in the bank. And I'll never forget, I was there, they, they gave the check out, I said, hand to my mama. My mama was like, thank you, Jesus. She waved that check. Man, we went out that night and they crazy. We went swimming, we, man, yeah. So then I ended up graduating Delaware County Community College. And let me just tell you, because of how good they were to me, let me tell you what the product of my life looks like right now. Because of a mama rose, because of people, the janitor, the lunch lady, the president, you know, the village. Here's what happened. By God's grace and mercy, I failed out of six schools. I'm not here to tell you I graduated Delaware County Community College with a 3.7 high honors, selected to all state P academic team through PTK, which gave me a full ride to any state university. I chose Westchester. Right? Then, after I graduate Westchester, I get ex after I get in Westchester, I'm too far, I get accepted to the honors program. They asked me to run the social media for the book they got accepted for publication through Peter Lang and Associates called Journey of South Africa. Every year they go to South Africa. They asked me to run that. That's the first book I'm going to be in. <laughs> then, then, I graduate from Westchester University, I graduate with summa cum laude, and I was selected commencement speaker. Yeah, salute. And I can tell you, that speech you did right there, yeah, you different. Salute to you. That was some special stuff, man. Yeah, I need to get your info and call you. I need some help. Well, at that speech, Temple University reached out and said, we want to do a documentary. I said, why? They said, we want to talk about your village. So the documentary is called Freddy's Village. And it talks about all the key figures in my life that got me to this moment. That day I graduated, they were filming a documentary. I got to honor my mom in front of everybody. That same video has been nationwide now, it's getting viewed everywhere. My mom got her day in the sun for the days that I ate and she didn't. For the days that she could have got her nails done, but instead she sent me to basketball camp. For the days that we got laughed at. For the days that they said we couldn't do it. I let her know, thank you. We did this. I graduated Westchester. At that time, my speaking company's rolling. Starting to get some things. I get a call from the Achieving the Dream Conference. And that's when I met Pima Community College. And things really change. By God's grace and mercy, I'm getting my master's now through Westchester. But the caveat is, I got to do it online because I got so much speaking, I can't be two places at once. I'm now on my first speaking tour. I'm doing a non-state tour this month. I'm doing convocations all over the country. Listen, I didn't been on so many flights. I'm so tired of airport food. But listen. Before I go, I want to leave y'all with this. My mom recently got diagnosed with leukemia, right? But she's fighting it and it looks very, the progress so far looks very good. So one day when I sit down with her, I say, mom, like, I'm sorry for the stuff that I put you through and for the wrongs that I've done. Please forgive me. She said, Freddie, stop right there. I said, what? She said, what education has done to you and the man that you have become, I can finally go to my grave and sleep well. Yeah. 
See, that house cleanup I was talking about, well, Rose was right. By God's grace and mercy, my wife just celebrated eight years of sobriety. My daughter celebrated two years of sobriety because she was struggling. Now, I'm not allowed to say my wife's age because I get in trouble. <laughs> my daughter, I met her when she was 18. I didn't have her physically, but she calls me dad now. And I said to her, I said, thank you. Why did you allow me in my life? She said, you didn't give me life. You made my life better. <laughs> Guess what? The community college I went to, she's now enrolled in. And she'll graduate there next spring. Yeah! Yeah! See, college did this for me. I grew up in a, in a one-parent home with, sick, with struggles and mental health and all this. I now have a two-parent home, sobriety and education. I'm breaking generational curses. Right? See, college taught me a lesson. College shouldn't just change my bank account. College should change my soul. So I leave y'all with this. When you're up here thinking about this loud, crazy black kid from Philadelphia who's screaming, <laughs> right? Sitting in this hot gym waving, <laughs> right? I even got a towel too. I want y'all tonight when you're laying in your beds, Pima Community College, I have a question I want you to ask yourself. What is your legacy? What footprint are you leaving in this building? Because I'm going to tell you what y'all taught me mine is. Inspire, educate, and create healthy lifestyles for all. My name is Freddie. It's been an honor. See y'all. Y'all, I can't wait till my mom got a standing ovation. <laughs> I can't wait till my mama. At, at this time, I'd like to ask the chancellor, the provost, John, Marcos, uh, and our award winners, please come up for a group photo. The event is not over. Please take your seats. All right, how was that?
All right, we're going to keep the good vibes going. If you reach under your seat, see if there is a blue ticket. We should have a lot of winners. Let's see those hands. If you have a blue ticket, you are now the proud owner of a cool Pima Community College lunch bag. All winners, hold on to your ticket. You can pick up your lunch cooler outside the gym at the United Way table. Uh, following the activities, yes, we are not done yet. There's still, I told you, we got two more pet videos, so. Speaking of which, actually, it's time for a pet video. Pima's Top Pets, Part 3. This time, I would also like to recognize uh, the board members again: uh, Greg Taylor, Luis Gonzalez, Wade McLean, Maria Garcia, and Teresa Riel. Here in the front. So I have been at the college for more than 22 years. My first day was April 2nd, 2001, and Freddie will probably be the only person in the room that appreciates that. But that was the day Duke beat Arizona. Sometimes it seems like a long time ago, and then other times it feels a lot closer. Do you remember what was happening 22 years ago? The first Harry Potter movie came out, Gladiator won Best Picture, and Wilson floated away from Tom Hanks. <laughs> Napster was shut down and iTunes was launched. We were wearing flare jeans, hip huggers, and low rise jeans. Christy, I was not wearing low rise jeans. Hanging by a Moment by Lighthouse was the number one song of the year, and Michael Jackson, Queen, and Steely Dan were elected into the Hall of Fame. And the world stopped on 9-11. Do you remember what was happening in your life and the world when you started at the college? It doesn't matter if you're new to Pima or celebrating your 40-year anniversary. We appreciate you. Let's take a look at who is celebrating 10, 20, 30, and yes, 40 years of service. I hope you enjoy this year's video. As Ted Lasso said, I do love a locker room. It smells like potential.
Cooper and I bought this on our fifth year anniversary. Oh, well, you have exquisite taste. Auction it off. Miss Welton, what are you going to do now that you fired George? Would you like me to prepare a list of candidates? That won't be necessary. I have just the one to sabotage it all. knock a doodle do. Oh, hello, Coach Lasso. Oh, just look at us. A couple of early birds getting some worms. I brought you a little something. Cookies, or as you call them here, biscuits. Although I recommend you do not cover these in gravy. Oh, Ted, no, I don't. Come on, just have a little nibble. Oh, f that's exquisite. <laughs> there you go. I'll bring these in every morning. We'll call it biscuits with the boss. We need to get to know each other if we're going to start noodling this team. So let's start with the basics. What is your favorite concert? Well, I believe it was the Spice Girls. The Spice Girls? They're pretty entertaining, but they're no Dolly Parton. Ooh, these are banging. Rebecca, I've been posting all about our new coach, and nothing. He hasn't made an impression. Is he even here yet? He's sitting right there. Oh, bollocks. I'm Keely. <laughs> I'm Ted. Don't you worry your little head about it. Ted, you ready to go meet the team? I certainly am. And I realize this all here is a bit uncomfortable. But, you know, taking on a new challenge is like riding a horse. If you're comfortable doing it, you're probably doing it wrong. I'll see you tomorrow for Biscuits with the Boss. The Aztecs return to their beloved football pitch for the first time this Premier League season. And he's done it! The crowd is in a state of rapture! Oh no, I can't believe what I just saw! If the Aztecs are going to pull it off this season, they need to get to work. Exactly. The Aztec defender puts on the pressure and the striker misses the goal! Aztecs miss another goal, ending the half at 2 0. Ted Lasso must be restless, hoping for a comeback in the second half. Well, team, we have our work cut out for ourselves in the second half. But I just want to let you all know what an honor it is to be your coach. Working with you has been the greatest moment of my life. Pima Community College is lucky to have each and every one of you. Each of you brings a special flavor of ice cream that makes you unique and an asset to the team. And if we can stick together and do what we do best, believe in ourselves and each other, then there's nothing we can't do. Does anyone have anything to say? it in. You know, a lot of people like to say there's no place like home and that's true. But there's also not a lot of places like Pima Community College either. One, two, three. Pima! On behalf of Pima's team, we'd like to congratulate you. For your many years as MVPs. That's Pima Community College! We couldn't have done it without you. Let's take a look at this year's all-star team. Ooh, biscuits! Ow! 
proud of you. Hey boss, we're gonna hit that pub across the way and toss around a few darts. You wanna come? Oh, come on, Rebecca. You can sing your little how at karaoke.
Big congratulations to all of this year's honorees and also to all of our fantastic guest speakers and award winners. Before we end this morning's activities, I would like to share a few housekeeping announcements. I'm sure many of you have heard about the tragic fires in Hawaii. If you would like to help the residents of Maui, you can donate to these disaster relief foundations. Uh, the links are also available in our digital program. Next, if you haven't checked in yet, uh, you can still do the attendance tracker. Uh, we will be awarding those winners later in this week, so check out email. Uh, next, lunch is available in, just across the way in the cafeteria. Uh, and don't forget, the afternoon sessions will be starting virtually at 1 o'clock, and division meetings will begin at 2.30. Uh, please give yourself time to get home or return to the office or sit somewhere comfortable to join in, and this is just for applied technology. We're meeting in person on the top floor of the new building. You can find the links to each learning uh, session in the digital program. There are a couple of signs as you walk out. You'll see the QR codes if you want to download the program. Uh, and you can, uh, after that, don't forget the importance of the student pantry. Uh, they are in need of hygiene items. And last but not least, we have the final pet video. <laughs> Hope everybody has a great start to the semester and a great year. <laughs> Pima's Top Pets, Part 4.